In this lecture, we are going to learn and understand what is a service in NestJS and what do we use it for. And we will also learn how we can create a service in NestJS. So let's first understand what a service actually is and what it is used for. Service in NestJS are basically classes that encapsulate the business logic of your application. And they are responsible for performing tasks such as data access, some complex calculation and other core functionalities. And services are injected into controllers or other services promoting loose coupling and testability. Now, when we make a request to the server, the controller is the one which is going to handle that request. Right, so controller will take the request and it will send the response back to the client. Now, if I go back to VS Code, here we have created this users controller. So inside this user controller, we have some methods for handling get and post request. Now let's say a user is making a get request to this URL. So that request will be handled by this method of this users controller. So this method will receive that request. And once that request is received, it is going to return this response. So here we don't have any complex logic or we are not accessing any database or anything like that. We are not writing any complex business logic here. But let's say instead of returning a simple text response like this, we want to access the database. We want to get all the user data from the database and then we want to send all the users to the client. Now here to connect to the database, get all the users from the database. Let's say we also want to filter the users or we want to sort the users. So these are the actions which we will have to perform before sending the user list back to the client. Now these logics we should not be writing inside the controller method. The controller method should only be responsible for taking the request and then sending the response. All the complex business logic we should not be writing inside the controller method. Now it's not like we cannot write it. We can write the business logic in the controller method, but we should not do that. We should always write business logic in a service class and not in the controller method. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's first create a service. And for that, I'm going to create a service for this user module. So inside this user folder, I'm going to create a new file. I'll call it as users.service.ts. So the naming convention for a service file is it should have this service in it. So we are creating a user service. So we are calling it as users.service. And then the service file is going to contain some TypeScript code. So the extension should be .ts. Now, a service is nothing but a TypeScript class. So here we are going to create and export a class. And we are going to call this class users service. And we don't need to decorate this service class with anything. Okay, now since we want to use this user service for writing business logic to get a new user, create user, delete user, and update user. And since we are not working with database right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an in-memory list of users. For that, I'm going to create a variable. I'll call it as users. And here, let me go ahead and let me specify the type for this user. So this users, it is going to be an object. And in that object, we want to have a name property of type string. We want to have age property of type number. We want to have, let's say, gender property of type string. And let's say we want to have is married property of type Boolean. Okay. So here, this users, it is going to be an array. And in that array, we are going to store objects which should satisfy this syntax. So in that object, we should have a name, age, gender, and is married property. And to that, let me assign an empty array. And inside that empty array, let me go ahead and let me create some user objects. So for example, I'm going to create John, age is 28, then gender, let's say male, and is married is false. Okay. And here we also need to specify the property names. So name is John age is 28, gender is male, and 
is married is false in the same way let me create one more object here let's say name is mark maybe age 32 gender male and is married true and here we have this error because in a class we will have a property and not a variable okay so this users is the property which is storing a list of users now i'm going to create a method and i'm going to call it get all users and all this method is going to do is it is going to return this dot users so it is going to return an array containing all the users then i'm also going to create a method get user by id okay so what i'm going to do is i'm also going to add an id property for each user which is going to be of type number so for each user i'm also going to have an id property so for the first user let's say id is one for the second user let's say id is two okay and from here this method is going to receive an id of type number and from here we are going to return a user and we are going to return that user whose id matches the id value which we are receiving for this id parameter okay for that on the users array so for that i can say this dot users on that i'm going to use this find method and to that we are going to pass a lambda expression so i'll say x such that x dot id equals the id parameter which we are going to receive for this method so this expression here it is going to return us the first user whose id matches this id parameter and we want to return that user from here in the same way let me also create another method create user and this method here it is going to receive a user object so let me call it as user and let me also specify its type as this object later we will create a model for this user but for now let me keep it like this so this user the user object which we are going to receive as a parameter for this create user it should also have an id name age gender and is married property and when this method will be called all we are going to do is we are going to add that user so for that i'll say this dot users dot push and we are going to push that user to the users array let's save this file and let me also close this terminal for now so we have created this user service class and inside this user service class we have created some methods where we are writing the business logic in this get users method we are getting all the users and we are returning it in this get user by id method we are selecting a user based on its id and then we are returning it and using this create user method we are creating a new user by pushing that user object to this users array now we want to use these business logics in our users controller so from here instead of returning these text messages what we are going to do is for this get users method we are going to get all the users from this user service and for that we need to create an instance of this user service inside this user controller.ts now when we create an instance explicitly inside this user controller it will make this user controller class tightly coupled with this user service class so we can ask nest.js to inject an instance of this user service class whenever it is required in this user controller and in that way we will keep this user controller class loosely coupled with this user service class but since we have not talked about dependency injection yet what i'm going to do is i'm going to create an instance explicitly inside this get user method so for that i'll say const user service equals new user service so here we have this user service class i'm going to use it and to use it i'll have to import it inside this user controller.ts okay so i'm importing it here so i want to use this user service i'm creating an instance of this user service and let me call it as user service okay and then on that user service instance i'm going to call get all users and this get all users it is going to return us an array as you can see it is going to return us this users array 
and that same array I'm going to return from here. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the browser or maybe let's go to the postman and from there let's make a get request to this URL root URL slash users. So when I make a get request by clicking on the send button, you will see that in the response we have received an array of users. So the first user is John and we have the second user Mark. Okay, then we will also create a method to get a single user in our next lecture. But here we also have a method for handling post request. So this create user method, it should be calling the create user method of this user service to create a new user and add it to this users array. So for that, let me go ahead and let me call the create users method of user service. So again, I'm going to copy these two lines paste it here and here I'm going to call create user okay and when we are calling the create user method there we need to specify a user so let me also go ahead and let me create a user object so I'll say const user equals and here I'm going to specify the ID as 3 I'm going to specify the name as Mary then we want to have an age property let's say 23 gender female and is married is false right and I'm going to pass that user object to this create user okay and what we are going to return we are going to return again a text message saying that a new user has been created okay so as you can see in the controller we are receiving the request and we are handling that request we are not writing any business logic inside the controller methods we are writing the business logic inside the service class so let's save this file let's go ahead and let's make a post request and actually when we are going to make a post request here here we are going to receive the user object in the request body and that object we want to add to the users array but currently we have not learned how to read the request body or request parameter or query string that we are going to learn in our next lecture so for now let's hard code this user object like this and let's pass it to the create user method of this user service to create that user so let me save the changes let's go back to postman and let's make a post request Let's click on the send button and you'll see that we have this message a new user has been created. So this message is coming from here as the response. Okay, so we use controllers for handling the request but we do not write the actual business logic in the controller method. We write actual business logic in the service class. Okay, and we use make of that service class method in the controller. So this is the difference between the controller and the service. Controller receives the request and if we need to perform some business logic, we pass the data which we have received with the request from the controller to the service class. And there, that data will be processed, it will create a response and it will send back to the controller. And then the controller is responsible for sending that response back to the client. I hope this is clear. Now, when we make a request to a URL, with that request, we can also pass some query string or some request parameters or also the request body. So, in the next lectures, let's learn how we can read the route parameters, the query strings, and the request body from within the controller of Nest.js application.